Hi everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're taking a look at a new game from Bitewing Games, who uh, had done that Kinesia little trilogy of games. This mm -hmm. is a bigger box than called Trailblazers by Ryan Courtney. Mike, have you played some of the other Ryan Courtney games, the Pipe ones in particular? Yeah, I've played Curious Cargo, the two-player version of Pipeline, which I have not played. Okay, I've, I've played both of those, so his name, you know, catches my eye, I sure, suppose. Sure, sure, sure. The reason I mentioned though, that this is another one of those games that uses those uh, Pipeline-type tiles, but mm. this time in, in a nice nature setting. You know, Chris, there are a lot of nature games on the market right now. It's yep. a very, very hot theme. We've got a few of them in our Dice Tower library. If for my money, the best library in board gaming. And uh, you could check that out at one of our conventions, Dice Tower East. Dice Tower East is the next coming up mm. one, so go check out DiceTowerEast.com if you want to sign up or register for that one. If you're watching this one later, we have uh, you know multiple conventions around mm -hmm. the year. So let's go ahead and see, is this one good enough to make the cut for the library? Mm. We'll show you how it plays. Here's the setup for a game of Trailblazers. You'll notice that you have three trailheads here represented by square cards, representing hiking, biking, or kayaking trails, and a hand of eight cards with those three matching colors that you're going to be using to create long and intertwining loops as you uh, score points by making a loop that starts in one section of the trailhead, goes around, and then eventually connects back to it, and you'll earn points for the longer of the trails that they are and the more of them that you have. There are also in-game scoring opportunities. As soon as you meet one of these conditions, you'll take one of your scoring cards and set it over here if you're the first person to do it. Uh, or at the end of the game, you'll count up majorities in certain areas, like having the longest kayaking loop or having the most hiking loops, and then when you or most total length in hiking loops. And if you win those first, second, or third place points, you'll get those as well. So how does the game work? Well, this is a card drafting game where you start with a hand of eight cards, and you're going to be choosing two of them and then placing them out into an area to make those grids. When you start the hand, and there's four rounds to the game, so at the start of the first round, you'll choose one of your three trailheads to place out as well, and you'll be placing out another one of these at the start of the second round, and at the start of the third round. Start of the fourth round, you don't have any more trailheads to place out. So you're going to choose two of these cards and place them out in such a way where you're trying to get those connections going. You take the remaining six cards and pass it to the player on your left. You receive six cards from the player on your right. And then you're going to be placing out some more of these cards here to try to make longer and continuously moving trails. So maybe you'll do something like this. Now you see that I have one trail completed, starting here. That is one, two, three, four, five length coming around to this side. And I've got this one over here, which is starting to kind of move along there. You pass the cards along, receive four more cards, and of these four, you're going to place two of them and then remove the last two from the game. So maybe you'll do something like, uh, something like this. You remove these last two. At the start of the next round, you're dealt a hand of eight cards and you continue working on this, but you also have to place out a new trailhead. There's another little rule here with any of the trailhead cards or any of these pathway cards, you can choose to overlap existing trail cards if you wanted. So if you wanted to do something like this, you could, where you can cover up parts of them, or I could take this one here and cover that up, something like that, and then start working on now waterway, uh, you know, water uh, trailways. So after the course of four rounds, you're going to score one point for each length of completed loop. You get the points for these conditions. Uh, during the game and at the end of the game. I'm going to talk very briefly. There are two little expansions that you can get for the game or with the game, depending on which version of the game you get. Some of the cards show animals on them. And when you place out a card that has an animal on it, you can choose to place an animal token onto it. But if you do that, you no longer can overlap that card with other cards at all, but you'll score more points based on how many animals you are able to make on trails that are completed. And then there's another version of the game wherein you only play with two trail heads and you're trying to make the longest trails possible, and that's kind of the different game modes. So that's roughly how this game plays. Let's get back to our thoughts. So before we talk about the game really quick, I want to talk about there's there's three versions of this I think you can find. This is okay. the box for box for the deluxe edition, mm -hmm. uh, which comes with this little thing to store 
a four-player set of the cards. This is also called the Travel Edition okay. that you can buy. And then there's a retail regular edition that doesn't come with like the extra cute little case. Uh, but it comes with the cards, you play the pipes, you, you do everything. Trails. I'm going to try to call them yes, trails. Yes, trails, not pipes. <laughs> so there are different versions. The overview is with the Kickstarter one, but there's really not a, a functional difference in the game except discs instead of animal meeples. Right. right. Okay. That's that's pretty much the only difference there. So I just want to get that out of the way. Sure. Um, Mike, I know from our previous conversations that you are not particularly wild about Curious Cargo yeah. as a game. That and, and, and it's. I want to say uh, that I think it's more a function of I don't think it was a bad design. Mm -hmm. It was a bad game for me. It made my brain melt, and it was to the point where it felt too much like work. That was my issue. I thought it was a well-designed game that I never wanted to play again. Sure. I enjoy both of these other outings that use the same time. And, and like I said, the only reason I mention it is because of that crossover. This is, this is like the same shapes, and it, it's all yes. of the same stuff, but in a very quick, approachable drafting game. Yes. What are your thoughts on the difference between... With just this game here, do you feel like it's an easier implementation of this type of, of route laying yes. uh, operation? Yeah, a hundred percent. The short answer is yes. I think that this has, like you said, the kind of the same core uh, loops of you know design ideas, but it just is so much more approachable uh, to me. It, it's, it's so much more clear what I'm trying to do. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, there are three different types of trails, you know, and so that might seem overwhelming. It's like, oh, you know, I've got, but it really isn't. The way that it's kind of structured where you've got kind of the different camps, the fact that you are drafting those cards, so you have some agency over what you are trying to kind of uh, focus on at that particular point, the fact that you've got in-game goals and end-game goals, all of those things give me direction as a player. And I think that that is what I feel like was lacking. Where in in those other games, which are were, you know just heavier, yeah, I oftentimes just felt stupid. Quite honestly, I felt stupid. I felt like everything I was doing was inefficient. I, I felt like I was missing something. Here, it's a very approachable game. This is a game that I feel like you know would not be difficult, especially in the in the kind of the standard version of, of the, the rules, to, to teach to most players. I don't know that I would say it's necessarily gateway, but it's not far from it. It's not. It The idea of drafting cards, mm -hmm. and you just kind of take a few of them, and then you start building stuff, it, it feels very what we would call gateway, very welcoming kind yeah. of a game. But it really has some meat on that bone as you're sitting there, especially with the potential to overlap previously played I cards. I was going to mention that. Yeah, that's huge. That changes the landscape completely. So a card laid... Literally changes the landscape. I won't even go for that. <laughs> I've been out yeed by Nelisio. Mm -hmm. You got got. This is the old phrase, a card laid is a card played. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can overlay them means that's not really true. If right. you say, oh, I bungled this path, well, this card's great. Boop. I love that, right. but it does mean that people can kind of get locked up in, I have like 7,000 possible <laughs> combinations of where I can put these two cards in a right. turn. But logically, there's only there's only a few that you would go for. Sure. But I like that idea of, should I make like a really long loop and score a lot of points? Should I really try and work and to make a lot of interlaced ones yeah. to score lots of small amounts of points, but with lots of different loops going on? And the thing is, you've got those considerations no matter what, but those are also going to be informed by those goals that are out there. I love that. You know, those goals are going to kind of help you determine what some of your priorities are going to be. There are certain things you want to do. You don't want to lock yourself into a corner where you can't score a path at all. Um, but you are willing to take risks if the potential payoff is there. You know what I mean? Oh, so crazy. so I, those those can sometimes, you know, be red herrings, of course, and they can lead you into, you know, taking your trail right off a cliff, so to speak. But um, but I love that they're there because, again, it gives you some type of direction um, in a game which can literally feel directionless because you can go wherever you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, so, no, I, 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 I think that works very well. It's a great way. I'm happy to see this same mechanism, the same... Uh, physical piece being used in its third iteration from yeah. the same designer, and it still feels fresh to me mm -hmm. because all I'm caring about are those routes. Right. That being said, there if this game looks too light for you, the deluxe edition, and I think that you can purchase it if you have just the travel of the regular, it has two extra little modular kind of expansion things. You can put animal 
pieces out, mm -hmm. which means you can no longer overlay that card. And that's a kind of fun little push your luck sure. thing. Collect points for more animals. And then the, the third mode is wildly different. The adventure where, mode. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're only focusing on two building two very long routes. That, I think, might satisfy people who are like, eh, it looks too basic sure, for me. Sure, Play the basic game a few times, try the animal one. Oh, cool, there's a little bit, you know, something here. You want something very different, but still very satisfying, just just a little bit crunchier? Do that adventure mode. Mm -hmm. Me, personally, I still really like just playing the regular game. Yeah, yeah. It, feels, it still feels very satisfying to me. I'm not sitting there going, I have to make this heavier. Right, no, I agree. And, and there's... Uh, uh, Plenty of replayability just in those goals, just in and of themselves, and just in the fact that it's a satisfying puzzle, right? It just mm -hmm. is a satisfying puzzle. Um, it, it's something that you, you know, you just can't keep wanting to, to, to I, I know I can do this better. I know I can do this better. So, and it plays quickly enough that you can easily do that. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. can play multiple games of this in a row. Uh, and something that we're not going to talk about in this particular review is that it also has a solo mode with a whole, you know, kind of a campaign thing. Maybe we'll, you know, one or both of us will talk about that in the future, but that's there as well for, for the solo gamers, gamers out there. Um, do we want to talk production at all? I mean, we can, we can speak to this production. This, sure. the, we can speak to this deluxe production because this is what we have. Sure. Right? Let's, I mean, let's talk about that really quick. Mm -hmm. this, this is the travel edition that comes inside the deluxe edition. Right. And I really like it. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's obviously a bit gimmicky, right? Because yeah. it's it's playing into this theme. And, you know, could you take this with you camping? Sure, because you've got a nice carrying case, you've got a carabiner, and you've got PVC cards, basically, that are, you know, relatively impervious. I wouldn't necessarily want to uh, use them to fend me off from a mountain lion. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they, they can, they'll do the job under most circumstances. I use Simon games to fight off the mountain. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. But no, I think the production is, is fantastic. You know, the, the quality of the cards, even the quality of the rule book, the, the material used for the, uh, the, the page of the rule book are top, top class, top quality. And you've mentioned Bitewing. They're a new publisher. Uh, you know what? They've come out of the gate really strong. Uh, you know, they, they had that, the collection of Kinesia games. I've seen a little bit of an early view of their next one, which is going to be in a box this size. That looks spectacular. So, you know, they've set up some high expectations. Hopefully they can continue uh, to, to meet those. So we'll, we'll see. But yeah, this is uh, a really good, really good production. Absolutely. I think my biggest downside of this might just be the idea of taking this travel, camping, all that type yeah. of stuff. Well, I'm not going to. I hate camping. But right, if right. I were, like, you know, outdoors and hiking and stuff... Uh, you need a good flat surface to play it on That's true. because the PVC cards in particular tend to slide a little they bit. Do. They do. But it, it works in the game. You need a flat surface to play it on. Uh, and also you need a decent amount of you, table space. You do. You so do. Each player is going to have a pretty big area in yeah. front of them. Yeah. Right. That being said, this is one of the games where at the end, I bet almost everyone's going to pull out their phone. and. Kind of <laughs> That's true, right? It looks great on the table. Mm-hmm. Mike, you want to go into your, close, your final thoughts? Sure, absolutely. Uh, this is a game that um, you know I went into with as open a mind as possible, knowing that I bounced pretty hard off of Curious Cargo, but I knew that this was being billed as a more welcoming type of design. Um, but I, I really think it's uh, stellar. I, I really enjoy this. This is a game that I feel like has many, many plays in it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, certain times you have a game, you're like, man, that was really satisfying. I really liked it. And I feel like, feel like I've seen everything there is to see. I feel like this is a, a puzzle that is, I don't want to use hyperbole, but I just, I struggle to find out how I'd get tired of this puzzle. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a satisfying thing to do. And you always are going to want to do better on your next play, even if you did great. Um, so great production, satisfying uh, puzzle. Uh, something that has, I think, a huge amount of replayability, plays in a really good amount of time, feel like I can introduce it to many different types of gamers or non-gamers as, as well, potentially. It's an 8.5. I think it's outstanding. I, I, I really, really am impressed with this. And uh, yeah, they, they did a great job, I think. Uh, I'm locked in right with you. I think right. this is also an 8.5 because of all those things. Because I think that this the, the stressfulness of the puzzle, it's delightfully unsolvable. <laughs> right. You're not going right. to say, well, clearly this is the opening move here. No. You don't know because of the wildness of the cards and all mm -hmm. that stuff, but you just work the best with what you can. I think that the fact that you put out one of those camps, one of those big square cards, yep. each round means that you 
aren't overwhelmed from the get-go. Yes. So this is a good game to teach to people. And then that last round, you don't put out another camp. You just work with what you've got. It gives you time to breathe, but it's still you still feel pressure being put on you constantly yeah. to complete those in-game objectives. I want to get there first, or I just want to make a giant loop. Right. Or I just want to make the coolest looking park out of <laughs> all of it. I don't even care about points. Right. I made this awesome loop that go, it twists in and of itself a bunch mm. of times and is worth 17 points, and that's my only points in the game. Good enough for me. Right. I, I really like it. So an 8.5, a, a seal of excellence well earned from uh, from the both of us. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for coming out to this review of Trailblazers by Bitewing Games. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. And have fun getting lost in nature. Mm -hmm. Follow the stars. <laughs>